The following is a Complexity production. One, two, three, Complexity! This is the press conference. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Oh, don't be serious, man. You've got questions, we've got answers. And now, your hosts, Complexity. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the press conference. We had a bit of a hiatus last week. A couple of things that came um, in between us and this beautiful studio, but now we're back. We're back. And Yay. as you may be able to tell, we didn't bring the full roster this time around, although I think we have a very suitable replacement. It's not Jason Lake in front of me, it's Suki. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. How's it going? Good. Um, you'll notice well, at the end of, or yeah, one of the topics is going to be the Army event, which we, which we brought up a couple of weeks ago. Actually, we can already talk about it right now, actually. Um, that's been something that everybody's been really excited about. I know Scott was really excited about it. We've all been excited about it. And Suki, you were one of the people in charge of basically making everything happen. So sure was. it was only appropriate to bring you on. Yeah, hopefully. Tell us about it. How was the event? Um, it was good. So um, background is, you know, in mid-June, we announced our partnership with the U.S. Army, specifically their BOSS program, which is um, Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers. Um, and it's basically... Uh, what's cool about that partnership is that we're not using it to recruit new soldiers, but it's to improve the lives of the soldiers that are already in the Army. So I thought that was pretty unique about the partnership that we have with the U.S. Army. And uh, when we announced the partnership, we took um, five of our complexity guys to Fort Bliss um, in El Paso, Texas, five blocks from Mexican border. It was just very interesting. Um, and uh, it was Shaz um, and Sick from our CS team, Punisher and Ducky from our Fortnite team, and then Joxon from our FIFA um, division. Uh, and we went there and they got to experience what it's like to be a soldier. So we had them get up at five in the morning and Jeez. do PT <laughs> for like there. an hour. It was amazing. It was hilarious. Hopefully we'll have some good footage from that. <laughs> um, and they got to eat with the soldiers and all that cool stuff. Um, and then we kind of closed it out at the Warrior Zone, which is kind of like their land recreation center. Um, and so we got to play, you know, Fortnite and FIFA and CS with the soldiers. They did a lot of like 1v1s um, yeah. against each other and the soldiers. And they had a lot of fun. Um, and then we had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to bring some of the boss soldiers to the GSPC. Um, and that was super exciting. So now that our players got to experience what it's like to, what it's like to be a soldier, we kind of wanted to give our soldiers an opportunity to see what it's like to be a pro esports player. So we had 14 soldiers come into town, um, and they basically did everything from like media day, where they took headshots, did interviews in our decompression porch. Um, and then uh, got to go to Baylor Scott and White and kind of do like training. They got to use the Mamba Sports Academy Mind Gym and do all the like, what do you call it? Cognitive training um, yeah. that our players got to do. And then our Fortnite guys, so Punisher, Ducky, and we flew in Donnie, our um, Fortnite coach from Europe, um, and had them kind of teach them. Fortnite and uh, show some skills and got to do like Storm Wars and yeah. it was really yeah. cool. It's like um, a whole boot camp, right? Yeah, it was like, a boot camp. It was an intense boot camp. Esports boot camp. Yeah, yeah. So they Maybe. really got to experience what it's like. Um, and then we ended it with a Fortnite tournament for all 14 of the soldiers. And um, we streamed it actually on Army Entertainment's Twitch channel. Um, and then we had our Fortnite players and Donnie to. Um, analyze and host with uh, Corey Dunn and they did a fantastic job I, know, yeah, I don't know if fun. anybody got to see the streams but I mean like Ducky and Punisher and Donnie they did a fantastic job on camera like it was awesome to watch and all of our soldiers had a really good time so and some of them were really good at Fortnite yeah that's what some yeah. well, that's what Punisher and um, Ducky highlighted also that the fact that some of them were actually surprisingly strong uh, on console um, I think Punisher Punisher mentioned that the PC players weren't as strong as he thought they were be were going to be, but the console players especially, he was really surprised about them. Yeah, yeah. They were really good. I mean, like some of them, you know, they didn't have to come in early in the morning, but they came in, in like half an hour before yeah. breakfast, and they were like, can we like 
play some Fortnite. And I was like, you're about to play for like another nine hours. Are you well, sure you want to yeah. play? I remember coming in some of those days and I show up at nine o'clock or whatever in the morning and there's already a couple people there on the computers. And I left. I stayed pretty late. I was there at like 930 leaving. And I'm like, oh, yeah. how are these people still on the computers I playing know. Fortnite? Yeah. Like, they're they're dedicated. The army's crazy. got a lot of you know really dedicated gamers, yeah. so it was awesome to be able to bring them out here and give them this experience. Absolutely, I think it was honestly one of my favorite activations that I've ever done in my career. Like it was so cool to see like the different contrasts, but also like the dedication that yeah. both sides have and in their you know passion. So, so much respect too from yeah. both sides. So which yes. one for was sure, it? for sure. I mean, everybody had a great time. So yeah, that was the one yeah. thing that everybody that I talked to during the first two days, they were all just saying how much fun they were having. Yeah. So that was really exciting. I'm sure the prize was uh, kind of part of why they had fun. I mean, yeah. MSI gave away monitors. They gave away PS4s. Like it was insane. So yeah, it was a lot of fun for sure. Cool. Well, hopefully that we can bring them back at some point. You know? Hopefully. Hopefully. It doesn't end here. We do have no. more stuff coming up yeah, with the U.S. Army. Yeah, we do. So oh can my gosh. Stay tuned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any teases? Stay tuned. Is... We can we can talk about it. Yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll be in Indiana, Indiana, Indianapolis, <laughs> in a couple weeks um, for the boss conference and. Um, me, Daniel, and three of our players, I don't know if I can name them yet, um, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there <laughs> talking about our experiences at Fort Bliss and at the GSPC. Um, and yeah, we'll do some more playing. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's always important to us, I mean, when we're doing this kind of things, to be giving back to the people that we're working with and, you know, the single soldiers in the Army. Uh, what better of a group to really try to give back to and really enrich their experience, give them awesome. opportunities. Um, and then being able to share that with the broader army as well at the boss symposium, being able to say, hey, here's what we've done. These are the results that we've seen. Maybe you guys want to adopt some Santa kind of esports, do some tournaments for your guys that are in the army and, you know, find other ways for them to kind of blow off steam after a long, hard day. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what we're here for. Again, maybe it's even going to be like an annual thing. Very cool project. That'd be nice. Anyway, moving on. Again, we've had we we have we got two weeks to cover, so there's a lot to talk about. Sure. Uh, last week, uh, leak last weekend, I think that's my personal highlight. Uh, Rocket League. I know Soren has been waiting to Heck talk yeah. about that. I'm, I'm, I'm also here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Soren, talk us talk us through about the fantastic weekend that our Rocket League uh, team just uh, sort of like wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, we came off a pretty decent performance in Dream Act Dallas already, where we uh, made it into day three, and um, yeah came into Valencia with like a little bit more practice, a little bit better um, understanding of what we want to do. And it worked out pretty well. And on the first day we went undefeated. I, Yeah, we went undefeated. Yep. We we beat Mount Gang in the first round and then uh, had a, a pretty good win against uh, TSM uh, to make it into day two, uh, where we, for some reason, I don't know how the brackets were working out, that we had to face Mount Gang again, but... For some reason, yeah. You know? <laughs> that was a wonky bracket. I really, I really don't understand how that's still happening. Um, but, you know, we beat them again. We lost, I want to say a close one. It didn't look close on the on the final score sheet against Triple Trouble, but we, I think we were ahead, I want to say, like 80% of the time, and then just... Got scored on in the last yep, minute. Pretty much. Yep. Uh, in I think two of the three games, and then the third one we were just uh, were kind of a little bit on tilt. Um, but yeah, we recovered against G two, uh, which was a big win for us. For some reason, we also always end up playing G two in these tournaments. <laughs> and the Coles games too. I remember Rocket like the RLCS finals where we played them. I remember we won. Don't shake your head. Still, it's like you know, this rivalry. <laughs> Then we lost in, in <coughs> Dallas, a close one, and then this one, we had their number. Um, looked pretty dominant for, for how I would judge it against a team that just came off of the runner-up spot in the World Championships. Um, so we were feeling pretty good. Then we got the, the River Rats team, um, the EG stack with Turbo Pulsa in the quarterfinals, uh, beat them, a team that came out of nowhere basically with no practice. And then we ran into the the Fireburner farewell tour, and sadly that's where our our run <laughs> our run ended. Um, and once again, a very close game. It was I think Justin in one of the games. Justin scored a zero Went second off. zero second goal again. 
Yeah. Or Fireburner, one of the two. That would have put us up 3-2 if I recall. Yeah, I, I think so too. It was kind of like the game was basically even at that point, and then we got... That's a backbreaker. Yeah. But uh, really, really proud of the guys. They've been improving, sadly. Like, we cannot really use this momentum since the Rocket League next season is still so far away. Why do they take such a long break, do you think? I don't it's like really three months, I right? don't really know, but they have done it for a while now, so I don't think they're going to change. Especially since the RLCS season in general is not, so not short. long. It's yeah. so short, and they yeah. take a break I mean, pretty much they're... just as long. Cyanix, if you're listening to the press conference, less break, <laughs> yeah. more season. <laughs> I mean, we've we've brought it up to them before. It's just they are stuck in their schedule. They don't want to do like a round robin double yeah. double bracket like other leagues are doing or sports leagues are traditionally doing. It is what it is. You get six, seven matches in Rocket League in the RLCS, and then you either get demoted or you go into the playoffs. There's like no in between. Um, but yeah, There's I'm really still, uh, other events though, right? Isn't there? Dream I mean, Mont- Montreal? yeah, but that's also in September. Oh, yeah, true. Because they skip Atlanta, which is in between, I think. Um, so, yeah. Sadly, no Atlanta sure. Rocket League. Sadly, no Rocket League for the next month and a half. Yeah, like, there's no WSOE to pick up the slack. No E-League. Yeah, ask me if Flake stream is just as good. Here you go. Make sure you're watching Flakes every day. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash he some, he... Flakes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think about that one, huh? I was like, is it... It is flakes. Is it, it is, is flakes. Corn flakes? No, nope. it is flakes. It's it just would flakes. also not be corn flakes, but well, the yeah. other, the the other, other name. One. The other <laughs> name. <laughs> I'm not going to say what right. it would be. <laughs> Moving plug. on. Moving Great on. Plug. <laughs> Great plug. Moving on. Not to bring the mood down, but unfortunately, it is unfortunate news. Oh Clash. man. Clash Royale also happened this weekend. Deep breath. Deep, Deep breath. breaths. Deep breaths. For sure. We had. It almost feels like almost like a reverse of the last season. We had like a really fantastic start. Actually, no, it is it's pretty much like no, it's literally the same exactly season. It's actually the same, the same thing. season. We yeah. just did, never, it just happened fast. Yeah, it just really helped. Yeah, no, that's um, true. Yeah. yeah, definitely a disappointing finish being seven and one, um, just past the halfway mark of the season with that one loss being, you know, due to technical difficulties that wasn't regamed. I mean, who would have seen getting, you know, fifth, sixth seed or whatever it is in, um, in the league, yeah. Like, it's it's crazy, but uh, unfortunately a collapse there. I mean, there's nothing really else you can say about it other than it was a collapse at the end of the season um, and, you know, falling into the, the deep seed of fifth and knowing the gauntlet style. As soon as I saw that we had fifth in the regular season and we'd need to win four straight matches on one day, like, that was crazy. Actually, we only had to win three, right? If we, to make top three, technically. To make top three, well, yes. To make top but three. Right. No, you won the whole dang thing, right? Um, so definitely unfortunate in that Quick regard. Math, except not at all. Uh, what? I had to do the math. You had to do the math. Never head. do math and live I, on camera. And I did the cam <laughs> thing where I just like crossed it off in my head. Yeah, no. Just, just <laughs> no. Never live math on camera. Um, live. Regardless, though, the team, despite having to overcome that big hurdle of having to beat like two, three, four teams in a row, they did really well in those yeah. games. Like to to immediately dominate Tribe the way they did, and yep. then to beat Fnatic, was it? Yeah. After we had just lost to Fnatic, like the the match day before, effectively, yep. and then, well, Immortals was. I mean, they just. <laughs> Dude, you know, I think again. we have like if you look at the stats of us versus every team, it's like. Yeah, good, 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 good. They're really good. Immortals. 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 It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like ah, that's they not just great. have our number. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to make any bold claims, but I feel like if I had faced any other team at that stage, probably would have turned but out the better. The problem is you got to be everybody. Problems Immortals to be the is best, pretty good, right? so they are always <laughs> in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, so got to figure that out. Yeah. Gonna get. Uh, Gonna get a Immortals shaped punching bag and have <laughs> the guys go at it. I don't nice. know. That sounds awfully violent. <laughs> that's, just, <laughs> that's just wrong. Yeah, figure figure something out. Uh, well, I believe the off season for Clash is also a little bit, right? A couple months, two months. Uh, months? It's wow. not that long. It's August, right? It's like month. at least we don't know. Oh, we don't oh. know. Well, yeah. Um, but we believe it's probably in August. All right. But we do not know at this current time. <laughs> I mean, it kind of has to be in August or September because it's the fall season. Correct. So it can't be that much later. Logically. Officially. Logic. <laughs> Esports. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What do you what do you think in general of the gauntlet format? I don't like it. 
Really? No. Interesting. The only other esport that I know of that's still doing this that didn't stop in like 2014 is League of Legends. Um, are they even still doing it? I know they did it like two years ago. I don't know that they Asking did it last one year. One guy that doesn't follow League of Legends. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, all right. No, I don't believe the, they do. The, I, don't, I think they stopped I, like two years ago. Yeah. Um, so, no, I don't like it. I think that you're, you're doing it to condense time. And it's like, if you're going to have a weekend tournament, sure. Yeah, you have playoffs that go through a bracket. But the reality is it's, a, it's two seasons a year. The teams live in L.A. Like, you have time to do a mm-hmm. full playoffs that gives teams the time to prepare for each and every opponent. Yep. You're just not. And I don't agree with that. I mean, I think at some point it just is not like – at some point, it becomes like the NBA, where the regular season doesn't really matter. As long as you make it to the postseason, sure. if you're good enough, you can beat a one seed, you can beat a two seed. It doesn't matter. So I like it from that point. I like it, it makes more, it more exciting. I like it more than the the weird stuff that Dota does or something, where you just can go through the upper bracket and then just not have an advantage at all. The only advantage is that you are not that. playing the first game of the day, and the game the team you're playing with is warmed up and ready to go and you were just sitting there having just eaten lunch or I mean, cold going back to ti3 i completely Jeez. agree that like <laughs> i mean that was the first time that everybody started complaining about the no upper bracket advantage at ti um yeah 100 percent agree so it's agree only five there. years in the making um i will say i think what i think what we all can agree on i hope so anyway is the fact that they had to play all those games in a row I mean, that was, that's that's where the like the disadvantage of the lower seed comes in, like well, that you have to have a, you know. Well, the disadvantage of the lower seed should be that to, you have to play more games. Yeah. But does it matter Not, if you does it matter if you can go day by day into another game? You get to prepare. You just have to play more games. It's so what? It's your job to play the video game. It's just to prepare. Do you know how much te- time our team puts no, in tell preparing me, for each? <laughs> Each and every I didn't game. manage them yet in last year. What, I'm what, talking about Clash, all right, buddy. not Dota. All right. All right. As, as you could tell, this is a very heated... This is something we could definitely I'm, spend an I'm hour... I'm heated. Right? This is oh, something we could spend an hour go. talking about. Formats and esports is something that I think you know we could like spend multiple episodes on. Can we title uh, this uh, press conference Soren and but if we duke it out? <laughs> all, I, all I request if we ever do the show like that is that when we go to Dota, we have Lake sitting there. Because Lake <laughs> loves to hear us talk about Dota. It's his favorite thing. <laughs> Speaking of Dota, uh, I, actually forgot, I actually forgot to add this to the <laughs> nice segue. I actually nice forgot segue. What a transition. I forgot to add it to the sheet, but obviously, you know, the TI qualifiers are coming up. That's true. Uh, we are actually, I believe, by the time this episode launches, we're already in the full swing of like the best of one uh, yeah. group stage. When the, Thursday. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, we'll see. Uh, Unless it launches we've played, tomorrow. We've played well. one game by then because it launches at like three, right? Yeah. So we have a 12 30 game against Beast Coast. And Beast then, Coast? How's the team feeling? Soren. Pretty good. I mean, it's TI. You know, you never... <laughs> we, we saw what happened in Gambit. CIS, where Gambit just, you know, tilts off the face of the earth. You always feel pretty good going into TI, except for when you don't. But normally you do. <laughs> Fantastic. That, <laughs> words of wisdom. That, that has to be Call me tire. John Madden. <laughs> <laughs> except when you don't. No, I think... Sounds about right. I mean, the team is, is focused. They're, like, preparing pretty well. As they, far as I know, they just had a meeting. Um... Like go, to go over tactics, go over scrims. They try to like model their scrims towards like our weaknesses, even though we might not win a lot of scrims, but just to address weaknesses in our drafts and stuff. And then starting on Thursday, we're going to bring out our real drafts and real results. I want to get up on a soapbox here, and I'm going to steal your topic a little bit. I don't have a Why topic. Why don't North American teams show up for scrims? I mean, and I, South American teams. I was about to say, <laughs> well, show up for scrims. And I talk about a lot of different games in this, but Dota in specific, immediately before TI, what are you doing? To be fair, most of the teams show up. It's just not on time. That but too. Eventually they the show up. The only team, the only game I've ever seen that's worse than Dota in this regard is Call of Duty. And that's that's bad. Like it's rough in Call I remember. of Duty. I remember. Like show up for your damn scrims so everybody can practice. We're to the point where I'm like, I literally walked in the room the other day and I said like, should we pay them? Should we pay other teams to show up for their <laughs> oh scrims God. on time? Like a hundred dollars for every scrim you show up to. Yeah, Don't no. give them any ideas. <laughs> 
Like, we need practice. I mean, there there are teams that consistently show up and that that are also consistently jumping in if other people cancel there you on go. us. But there are call out the good guys. No, I'm not. Because okay. then by at the top, then by, you know who's by, the bad exactly. guy. Who's the bad guys? <laughs> I'm but, not gonna do but that. But leave some out. No. Yeah, <laughs> no, just a couple of teams. No. Also, I don't want to say that team name on the air. There you go. Whoa. Oh, Ooh. All right. Yeah. Oh, all right. I figured. Okay. E, who's anyway. missing? Dota scrims. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are good. So many nice. titles for this press conference. <laughs> so, so many titles. Poor Zach's going to have to choose. Uh, I guess that's it for Dota. I think we're all pretty... Well, you don't want to talk about the summit? Just not even... We have another press conference until then. But we are invited But we're now. invited. Woo! Woo! Nailed it. Um, okay. Also, our players are banned from contact sports for the week. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> what um, the hell happened? Nothing. It's just TI qualifiers are up, and oh, we are we started to play uh, basketball, and we started to play tennis, and then on Sunday was the last time I allowed it because Zach was complaining about his wrist hurting after yeah, after tennis. So I was like, "You guys are just getting wrapped in bubble wrap," and Adam actually right. wanted to be wrapped in bubble wrap. Like we should make that happen. That's a, that's content. That's content. Piece. Yeah, that I, want, I wanted to bring it up to Ford, but he's going to call me an idiot again. Well. Just That's like just everyone, everyday every occurrence. <laughs> um, yeah, we're invited to the summit alongside Alliance for now. Um, <laughs> all the info. Just there's, there's, there's all the info that, that there's, that, that's out there. But <laughs> and there's a summit. There's summit, a summit 10. The 10th 10. summit. Wow. I'm pretty sure that's the only second summit that we've actually attended. Is it the first summit that there. isn't at the house? It's um, not at the house? No, it's, it's, not in, the, house it's in their it's, studio. Yeah, it's, it's in the studio. studio. Yeah. Wow. So is it the first Dota it's summit first that is not in the house? Yes. Yes. Well, you could also argue that the couple first summits weren't in that house anyway. But was, in, in was, like, had, the Take TV home story cup setting house. kind of thingy. Well, it's still a similar setup. But it's, it's not in the studio. house. I mean, it's a studio. But they have the studio model towards, like, a house type thing. Right now, anyway, that's what they use for the CS summit. I swear to God, it just looks like a house, the way you look at it. I'm just saying. Doesn't anyway. <laughs> Apex. Let's just move on from Dota. Apex. The team... Uh, Played week five. They're actually yeah. heading towards the studio this week, right? Yeah, they're heading out to the Face It Studios in Santa Monica this week. Um, so make sure to tune into the Face It stream to watch each of them. So that's going to be exciting. Um, unfortunately, last week had our, our worst performance, I yep. guess, so far in this event. Um, still, which is pretty good that we're still upper half. Yeah, um, that's Middle our worst settings. performance. We haven't placed below the top. Actually, half I think pack. we're. Just in the lower half. Eight. I think what? eighth was just the no, it's 16, 16 teams. teams. It's 16 teams. Then we're in Either way. Sorry. Either way. Notes are wrong. Uh, well, my notes are wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> great. Can we call out the back we, uh, end the notes, Kim. <laughs> we, uh, we did not have the best performance last week. Um, I think maybe season two maybe might have screwed with the guys a little bit. Uh, definitely some changes. Um, but I know that they're still really confident going forward, and we're still in good place. Uh, fifth in the league, so we're really excited about that and uh, excited at the possibilities of some practice here in the live event studio at Face It, maybe practicing for upcoming events otherwise. Um, <laughs> I didn't say anything. Well, lots of teases in this, in this episode, too. Right. What's going on with Apex? <laughs> there may or may not be tournaments. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly excited for it. I, I really like watching or following all of it. And like you mentioned, I think season two is screwed with a lot of teams, not just us. Yeah. Uh, you could definitely tell there's a couple of teams or we're still adjusting to the season, so time will tell. Speaking of time. That's a really weird transition. I was about to why how are you making this turn to Hearthstone now? Yeah, I don't know. We, Tides of time. Tides of time. He's uh, what is he doing now? I don't know. We tried to recruit streamer. him in Hearthstone back in like 2013. I know I was there. See, yeah. this is the perfect transition. Fantastic. Hearthstone, <laughs> the Grandmasters <laughs> League portion, or the League portion of the Grandmasters so League is over. Right? It's playoffs. Yes, it's playoffs. It's playoffs. Time. First, unfortunately, first season is over. Unfortunately, Casey didn't make the cut, but That's Tyler true. did. That's true. Woohoo, Tyler. Yeah. All of that is true. What happened to Casey? Why didn't he make it? Well, Casey had rough draws. All right, you can see draws. it if you, if you watch the camera. It goes from being really angry to just throwing your hands up in the air and just laughing at everything that happens. So basically what happened is I talked with him a bunch, and he prepped, as always, against the decks that he knew Psycho would bring because he's a practice partner. And in that, he went something like 28-3 and three against the decks, and then he got 2-0'd. 
Yeah. Yikes. That's, that's just harsh sometimes. Mm-hmm. So. That's the um, RNG. What can you tell us about the playoffs, though? When <laughs> It's a very weird format. I can tell you that much. I saw. <laughs> for, <laughs> for some reason. Is it a gauntlet? For, <laughs> no. <laughs> for, some worse, reason, for some reason, the it's it's like a three-people bracket. Yeah. Because it's modeled after their group. So the, fir- the f- first one gets a buy into basically the upper semis or upper finals. It's like GSL just with three people. Right? Yes, exactly. And then if you the, the other two play against each other, yeah. the guy that loses gets a buy in the lower wa- round and then goes into the, like just the next round. So the two people in the finals play each other and one gets dropped down. So basically the first game doesn't really matter. Yeah. Is this Sam's doing? I'm not calling out anyone. <laughs> Sam Braithwaite, I know that you're involved in the esports team at Hearthstone. Sam, I love you. you. <laughs> you proposed some wacky formats back when don't we worked at Han. This might be one of them. I, I don't know, but it's just, it's really weird. And some people looked at it and were like, how is this first match mattering? Yeah, there have already been a couple of complaints. Because you basically, like, you can, you basically can play two games against the same person and only the second one matters. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to play another one in between. But to be fair, that's the whole problem with GSL in general. Yes. I mean, but kind normally of. you have to play like a, a, an elimination right. game first, and right. that one is a buy. So, because it's just three people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I like yep. the innovation. Mm. I like that we're trying new things. It's a GSL just with three people, <laughs> and it <laughs> falls apart. It's, I like that we're it's trying taking something things. old and making it worse. <laughs> I like that we're trying new things. I love your optimism. I just don't like trying it in such a high-profile way. <laughs> All right, just to wrap up our topics uh, <laughs> here on this list, we did have CSGO two weeks ago, which we couldn't talk about last week, but we had two qualifiers that we unfortunately didn't make. Yeah. A uh, bit rough, but, I mean, I think as Rory aptly put it on, on Twitter, I mean, th- this team has only been together for literally, two, at that point, for like three and a half weeks maybe. Yeah, I mean, you're right, they have, but... I still, frankly, see it as pretty unacceptable that we didn't make it, it further in those than we did. Um, Envy, you know, know a lot of those guys, love a lot of those guys. Brad and Sam, like, um, they're a good, they're a good team for sure. But like, we need to do better. And we showed the next day that coming in with a slightly different strategy, being able to prep against them a little bit differently, um, we crushed them. We crushed them the very next yeah. day. We beat that. We go to. We go to Chicago. Like, we just got to do better. And um, unfortunately, the next day, you know, Marky went off on EU United. Yes. Yeah. Uh, destroyed insane. Furia, one of the top 10 teams in the world online there. Um, so, congrats to United. That's really nuts. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, this is a team that we're expecting more out of. Um, and we know that it's early, but we expect more quickly. So these guys have been working really hard. Um, they've been putting in a lot of scrim time. And uh, I don't know, actually, when the next time they're going to be playing. I think it might actually Berlin. be the, the major. major. Yeah. It's Berlin, yeah. Um, so they're leaving for boot camp in about three weeks here. Um, so they're basically going to have five weeks uh, to prepare for Berlin. Um I'm excited to see what we can do there, but we got to do better. And with that, on that somber note, our Q&A Jeez. portion. Um, Jeez. As always, feel free to ask any questions that you might have for us. Um, I know that Soren likes answering Dota questions. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> use hashtag ColdPC on Twitter or hit us up on Discord, Reddit, whatever, YouTube. Leave a comment below if you have any feedback for us. And, yeah, again, you might just be featured in a future episode. A Round on Discord asks, with Fortnite releasing the for- uh, format for the World Cup, what are you guys' thoughts on the rules against branding on player jerseys or the incredible p- price splits between small placing thresholds? Calm down. It's okay. I had to have multiple meetings about <laughs> the uh, branding on jerseys. Um, frankly, it sucks. Like it does. Like I understand that it's their event. They have the they have the prerogative to do whatever they're gonna do. But yeah, it's difficult to want to invest in a game that's not gonna allow us like there's not a ton of different ways that esports orgs are monetizing right now. Sponsorships are part of them. Sponsorships you gotta do something. One of those low hanging fruit items that can provide a substantial amount of value is put logos on the jersey. Do that with some other stuff and you've got a decent activation. And for them to come in and say, hey, we're not allowing that, 
it sucks. Mm -hmm. It puts us in a hard spot with our sponsors. It lowers the value of organizations. It lowers the value of our players being at these events. It makes me less interested in investing in competitors in that game. So it sucks, but I get it. If I was in their position and, you know, I was concerned about me, 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 that's what I would do. But at some point, you got to make sure that you're understanding the perspective of the organizations that are trying to invest in your game, that are trying to grow these stars. Um, and that's one thing that Epic with Fortnite has, you know, not made a priority. And that sucks. I guess to add to that also, they just added airstrikes. And I was about to say, like, oh, two sorry. weeks two weeks before the, the biggest tournament... They're going to introduce a completely new feature. I mean, I'll say it. Epic doesn't care about esports. Like, they don't care about competition. Yeah. Like, competition within esports, they're putting a ton of money behind it. But I see this as more of a marketing vehicle than anything else. They see that they need to be in it. But the integrity of the competition is not always important to Epic. And that's, again, it's their prerogative. What is their focus? Their focus as a business is making money. And they understand that there's not a whole lot of ways that they're making money from esports. They're making money from the hundreds of millions of players playing the game. And those players are excited that people like Ninja and whatnot are playing the game. But Ninja's going to keep playing the game even without a $30 million oh, prize pool. Absolutely. They're doing it to keep a small subsection interested and to you know, promote this image that there's competition. But the competition is not putting integrity first and that's reflected every time that they release something like airstrikes into the game a week before the world cup um they've done it multiple times they said they were going to stop doing it and sure i guess this is two weeks at this point before world cup so it's like you can kind of get, get used to it cool we can kind of get used to it but um yeah i want to see them step up if they're really going to take competition seriously uh, you know they need to take competition seriously uh, and just to finish off Aaron's question, lastly, is anybody from us going to attend New York or going to be in New York? Um, we'll definitely have somebody from the media team there going to be doing some recording. Um, Ducky and Donnie are also going to be there in addition to the three players. Uh, we'll probably have somebody from our staff, but we haven't flushed that out yet. Is Jason going to be there? Surely he's going to. Um, I'm not sure. It's I have busy to talk month. with him about that. Yeah. It's going to be a busy month. Um, Deadly from our Discord asks, have you guys ever looked at Gears of War now with the de developer support and I guess also with the old Optic roster being free agents? Um, I mean, I'll say it. I had a call with Ashes from um, the Optic roster last week and just trying to kind of understand their situation and what they're looking for. I think it would be foolish not to be talking with them, being that they're living basically down the street right. here in North Texas. Um, their team house is in Plano. We're in Frisco. It's literally cities right next to each other. Um, so talking with him and kind of understanding. Um, Gears of War is something that we've looked at for probably four plus years now. Uh, we actually had a team back in the day um, and looked at it with Gears of War 3. Um, that game has done pretty well for itself. I'm not 100% confident that it's a game that we want to be in in terms of our revenue and revenue generation perspective and with the core audience that we're targeting right now. Um, but undeniably, if you were going to go into a game with a team, this is probably about the most ideal situation you could get with a 19-time champion yeah. team being available in your city. And the fan base is, you know, incredible. Yeah. The fans keep reaching out to us, to other orgs, to just pick up this roster now. Yeah, so, yeah. so you know, I, I don't want to guarantee or even suggest that we're going to be picking up this team, but, yeah, we've at least had a conversation with them. Uh, Dr. Waldo asks, "Have you guys seen a new? Have you guys seen a fan in the new Cold Gear at a LAN yet? I mean, he's specif specified CS GoLand, but I mean, we've had a couple of other LANs yes. too. You have? Yeah. Well, I mean, I personally haven't because I don't go to events anymore. <laughs> that, that, was, that was all I wanted to say. <laughs> wow. No, like where? Because um, I haven't at events." Like the new one, I've seen a ton of people with the there old one. There was a few people actually. with the um, over at the uh, the London ECS. Oh, okay. Because we saw one completely decked out uh, at DreamHack Dallas when with we the old with the old yeah when we yeah stood, he had like all kinds we, of old when stuff. When we stood oh, when we stood in line and there was one person at DreamHack Valencia that the camera in our games kept focusing on and he had the old jersey. I want to say very old jersey. So. How old? Shout out. 
different headset sponsor old. Mm. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. I see. I guess, yeah, and the last question goes to Show Nation, also from our Discord. Is there a current agency for esports athletes, and what aspects that are in regular sports can we expect to see in, e in the esports scene soon? Just the first question. I mean, it's pretty there are tons of agencies tons for of agencies. some some agencies even, or some traditional sports agencies or talent agencies yeah. for like singers and stuff have adopted esports divisions. Um, there are some divi uh, some agencies that are just esports yeah, that are I coming mean, from within the scene. Um, I mean, just to name a few off the top of my head: CAA, IMG, Kinetic. Esports, uh, ESA, UTA, um, UTA uh, Catalyst, People in Sport. I mean, there's there's a Tons. there's a huge number of them. Um, I would say that most most influencers these days have an agent. Um, I would say probably about a third of the players on our roster, maybe a quarter of the players on our roster have agents right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends per game as well. Some games are like fully permeated by agents, but we love being able to work with agents. Um, agents bring professionalism to esports. Um, it's another layer of accountability. And as you mentioned, and we've talked about this before in, in previous uh, press conference, but you know, I think for everybody uh, at our company, it's also really important that players know that you know when they do have a contract presented to them, that they probably should cons consult somebody. If that is an agent or a lawyer or whatever, just have somebody consult them. So yeah, agents keep them accountable or keep us accountable, I suppose. Both. Both. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The latter part of his question: What aspects that are in regular sports is something that you guys expect to happen in esports soon or to be integrated soon? God. So many things. So many things. Yeah. I think that there's a ton of things out there that are in traditional sports um, that are applicable in esports and somewhat vice versa. Um, I think being here in the Cowboys headquarters right now, it's really awesome to be able to learn from our corporate big brother across the street. Um, and occasionally they learn from us as well. So being able to share that knowledge, uh, Baylor Scott and White Sports Performance Center, that's also right across the street, being able to learn and work with them. I was literally just over there with Ducky right before this show. So um, there's a ton of different things that we're taking from traditional sports. Um, and we're excited to be kind of leading the charge in a lot of those ways as well. Just as a reminder, we did have an episode of Groundbreaking where we cover uh, a lot of what you just talked about, you know, our partnership with or our corporation with Bar Baylor Scott and White. And this, this, the things that Death talks about in that video, too, is just yeah. something that I think just two years ago or something people wouldn't have even imagine that, you know, yep. we have these kind of, like, tools and um, these partnerships at hand. So, yeah. I mean, even just things like I walked in today and I saw our Counter-Strike team using the decompression porch. And, you know, two of the players are sitting on the chairs and one of them is working with a soft tissue massager. The other one's using uh, Normatec so for compression therapy on his legs. Um, and some, I think it was Hunter that was asleep in the nap pot. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Like, yeah. that's something that nobody else has access to that we're trying to make sure. Um, they we're, we're trying to make sure that our players yeah. are on the cutting edge. Yeah. And uh, look out for just more of these kind of things happening in the future as well. Like, this is yeah. literally the road that we're going yeah. down. I mean, as more and more, like, traditional sports teams invest into esports, it's just going to get even more integrated and... Everybody's gonna learn and not from just everybody. them, but also just even the sponsors that aren't yeah. in esports yet that are coming in trying to bring in their expertise yep. or just trying to learn exactly. from esports. I'm excited to see how it develops. To be honest, I mean, as a sports and esports fan, like it's really cool to see like how both sides come together and teach each other things. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that just wraps up the show this week. Thanks everybody for listening in. If you've made it this far. Penalty points. <laughs> penalty if, points. If he's not here, I have, I have to. I just have to. What's happening? What if somebody just yeah. like skips the whole thing and goes to the last like 30 well, seconds? Well, then you don't get any. They're spiritual. I would say that's ingenuity points. Oh. Well, maybe. Anyway, thanks. And <laughs> see you guys next week. Adios. Bye. Bye.